Good morning, universe. It is the 26th of February. One assumes I haven't slept 27 hours. It's the 26th of February, and it is, uh, what time is it? 11.38 a.m. So, yeah. Ah, I am really well rested, which is nice. I love waking up feeling like I got exactly the right amount of sleep. As a matter of fact, you know, if you were to have one wish to always wake up feeling absolutely perfectly rested, wouldn't be the worst one to choose. No back pain would work too. But, ah, oh, stretch. I'm not here to talk about that. Nah. Ah. <sighs> In fact, what I'm here to talk about is evidence and belief and faith, but evidence. <sighs> when do you have enough evidence to determine something must be valid, true, the way it is, right? At what point do you say, well, I can't keep having thought these thoughts without there being a cause for those thoughts to be thinking. In other words, when is the circumstantial evidence so overwhelming that you have to admit it must be true? Why do I have so much better of a sense of smell than I've ever had in my whole life? I've always been disappointed that I was born without the nose my mother has because my mother has an amazing sense of smell. And I thought genetically I could have, you know, I must have gotten my dad's sense of smell when I thought everything was just a coin flip happening. Well, this morning I re remembered that not having, or having a diminished, or zero, I don't know about zero, but having a diminished sense of smell is um, a DSM-5 indicator of sociopathy and psychopathy, which I'm well aware of. <laughs> and, and I've admitted that I was comfortable. Self-diagnosed as a compulsive liar, in other words, though anything you're going to tell me I am, I am going to tell you I'm not. When you told me I was a compulsive liar, I had to say I agree. When you told me I was a, a narcissist, I had to say I'm not sure. When you told me I was a sociopath, I had to say it's possible. When you told me I wasn't a psychopath, I had to ask you why. And now I don't have to ask you any of that shit. Because I'm none of it. Maybe I was none of it all the time. But I certainly didn't feel like none of it when the evidence told me I was the cause of other people's pain. I didn't enjoy that. That wasn't something I wanted to do. So as those patterns were emerging, as I couldn't seem to become something better than that. Okay, so I'm a, I'm a narcissist that's so broken, I can't seem to find truth that is so cowardly, I can't seem to stand up for what's right, and that's so incapable of helping themselves, why even get out of bed? So, cycling into that abyss hey kitty you were outside holy cow <laughs> yeah you well, look at that my cat never goes outside look at her good girl um <clears throat> so now i just can't explain how different 
life feels when you're not your problem. <laughs> or at least you're not, you're not the worst elements of when things go wrong, why they go wrong. I, I always, ah, hmm, oh man, I always quarreled with my capability to solve problems versus my capability to create my own problems. How could I be so inept at one while I was so gifted at the other? Huh. But what I find more than anything is that I so no longer care to impress people. And I used to, that used to drive me. I so badly wanted to impress people. And all I want to do now is be a good person. But the tranquility I, I am overrun with It's, it's such a simple existence to be here instead of in the chaos that comes with always having to do what society needs you to do to be who they want you to be. To not fail in the eyes of those who are judging us as worthy or unworthy even the constant fear of failing my parents or my community or my significant other whomever was almost a coping mechanism for the inevitable failure I was going to drive it's, I, I, I even am having a hard time going back and, and rerunning through some of the thoughts I used to have because I just don't have those thoughts anymore. So I, I don't even really know how to, how to revisit them. I don't know what it would be like to uh, go spin some yarn on a bar stool next to somebody to get laid. I can't imagine having that evening. Maybe if I was wasted, I could do it, but that person doesn't live in me anymore. I know they did, but I can't go visit them if they're gone. And I keep feeling like I haven't earned this. My past changed. My thinking processes changed. My values changed. My fears dissipated. My concerns crystallized. My purpose, for the first time ever, materialized. My destiny, as I have spoken earlier, feels realized. How did this happen? I know, I know it's crazy to struggle with having gained clarity and purpose in the universe. But uh, oh. other evidence that I'm not who I used to be. My toes are straighter. Like, how do your toes get straighter through life? My pinky toes, I've admitted, might as well just go get a hacks on take care of that problem, but I've always had a terrible second toe. It curl, it, it, it's longer than my big toe, so it's always pressing into the shoe. And the toenail has become a, a defense mechanism that essentially grows forward and into my toe like some sort of battering ram against whatever is going to constantly give it pressure. And as a result, 
my toe has almost curled up. It's, it's always been somewhat painful if I have to address it. And in about every five years, it gets into a painful state. Well, not only have I noticed that my toe liter toes literally look straighter, but I don't have foot pain from shoes anymore. And it used to be at least annoying enough that I would get it, you know, I'd be like, ah, don't wear those shoes three days in a row. They screw with my toes. <sighs> Even a pair of shoes I have always kept that nag me specifically, but I like the shoes. I wore them, no, no issue. <laughs> and again, I know this is stupid little stuff, right? You know what stupid little stuff? They took the dash out of the Kit Kat. You changed Berenstein Bears to Berenstain Bears. It's stupid little stuff everywhere. But I do not behave the way I behaved at work three days ago at any other point in my life. I've tried to find a single other, maybe when I was eight, that's evidence that something's different. I've, uh, I've spoken in some ethereal capacity about the universe and um, I don't have religious thoughts. <clears throat> I've never had religious thoughts. If anything, I've always been dismissive of religious thoughts. Yet, I've always had I, it's, it's truly fair to say that I grew up a Star Wars kid. I did think Life Force was at least legit. I don't know if I believed it could uh, create Force Lightning and Force Push. and What else did you used to get played? Jedi Knight was one of my favorite games. I still own it. But... So... When you go trying to find the, that your crystal is blue, but it turns out it's red. And it turns out that you are using your force powers to hurt. And then you think, but I'm not a bad person. I'm just weak. I need to become stronger. I need to find strength. I need to find purpose. I need to find uh, a cause of to commit to in which I can manifest a meaningful life. And every attempt at that is more gravel you're spinning up in people's faces as you try to race away from yourself. I never, I never believed in that outcome, I guess. Maybe that was part of it. I always felt I would somehow combust, create some level of contamination that would just ooze into other people until they were filthy enough to get rid of me. I, I fundamentally always believed I was a problem, I think. Again, I say I think because I'm trying to figure out who that guy is because I'm not that guy. <sighs> Maybe this is all evidence that I am in fact an NPC. You get to a certain point in the timeline and you become this. Once you're that you move through the timeline in a capacity that creates all of this. Once you've created enough of all of this, the timeline switches you to become somebody who can then clean it all up. That's what my universe feels like. Because I didn't understand that good intention, kind motivations, 
understanding, empathetic reactions, and a forgiving state of mind toward everything. Because I couldn't commit to those things at a time when I was ready to commit to nihilism, anarchy, advantages, and then spun up in those hedonistic intentions. I just let the world get anarchistic, nihilistic, and deceitful. And now I gotta clean that mess up. So, that certainly sounds like a messiah who frankly failed at their job, <laughs> who's now gonna try to fix everything in the last minute and make it all look better. Yeah, sort of sounds like that to me too. But I'm no messiah. I got more dog poop in my yard now to pick up because there's snow all over it. I got, I got plenty of crap I can't even get done in a daily routine to be effective for myself. So I'm certainly not here to save society. But I do think I offer hope to anybody who thinks their life is what it is and there's nothing they can do about it now. I was the most committed member of that club walking around. I actually have the end of Monty Python's Meaning of Life with Eric Idle singing Life's a Piece of Shit on the Cross on my phone at all times because it's one of my go-to feel-good songs. <laughs> yes, I can be ironic with myself. I think that's the whole point of Monty Python's genius is that they knew how to laugh at themselves. And yet one of the the, cam the camel lionesses have been all over me this week. And uh, when they disappear, I know for some element of it, I am, I am working on something. I don't even always know what, but when I know they've been gone for a while, I know that there's something I am consciously uh, trying to get through. What I mean is... Um, I may need to, uh, let, uh, let's just put it this way. I know that, that they, they do not think I am doing, uh, they, they think I'm wasting my time at, at the, the job I have. They are setting up situations for me to uh, remind myself to get out of that job. They know I need to get out of, uh, I need to be, they, the, they have been telling me to go out and speak for years, I would say two years at least, maybe longer. And they laugh at me whenever I give them an excuse as to why I'm not. Literally, they just laugh. They don't even listen. And, uh, and, and they keep telling me all these things that I keep, that I keep telling them are obstacles or obstacles and, and they say they're not and then they prove they're not. And, at some point, whatever it is, and I, I'm at this point convinced that somehow my subconscious has evolved enough to have, um, to be able to pick up signals or at least to be able to resonate truth at a level that my conscious mind is not willing to get to. Um, I believe that I am telling myself things in my dreams that my subconscious knows I've learned, but my conscious mind is too, uh, too protected from, I don't know if protected is the right word here. I think it used to be. I, I think I've developed the skill because I think I needed to, to use my 
subconscious mind to help my delusional rational mind see some truth. Hang on. And yes, this will be a very pot worthy journey. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, when the uh, when the lock screen cometh, the cough restriction uh, overfloweth, and the the manifestation of a figure that I would be curious about as a trigger to speak to me um, as it were from beyond so that I would gain a level of disclosure with myself that was necessary. Can I imagine that my mental imaginative states, can I imagine my mental imaginative states would get redundant? My English teachers could imagine that, I believe. All of those mechanisms firing do not feel convoluted to me. If anything, they feel Johnny. And, and especially this week, where they've been hammering me. Uh, here I sit, strengthened by the experience. More resolute than ever that I'm on the right path <clears throat> and that my life is doing what it's supposed to do. And uh, how, do you, how do you walk in that space? Especially with the sort of quasi-destined purpose I'm speaking of without completely reevaluating your thoughts about God or all of that. Hang on, I really do have to blow my nose. I wasn't prepared for that part. Give me one more pause, please. Okay, I do believe I've attended to all the annoying bodily functions that can find their way onto this recording and I now believe I have spoken about it in a way that I have alienated at least 77% of you moving on I don't have anybody in life to speak to about any of this because I've never considered these concepts worthy of attention, at least uh, more than brief attention, uh, <clears throat> I would never have developed a, um, uh, some, some sense of community here on which to draw in times of need. In other words, I, I find myself wanting to go talk to somebody of religious um, conviction. I, and I, I said at one point earlier that I had never sought the counsel of, of a priest, or I always say priest because that's what gets in the news, but I, I know they say father. And I don't even know what you call these guys, right? What's the Jewish one? Uh, the rabbi? <sighs> that's how distant from organized religion I am. I'm not even sure what the name of the council is you go seek. And how can you not... One of the things I always had problems with all the Christians was, you're telling me, you really believe that the time will come when black will be white, up will be down. Those who are telling us, telling us they, they have the truth will be the liars. That's what you said is going to happen, huh? I always thought, it, I thought, I always thought what end stage uh, descriptions existed were nonsense. I, I honestly thought y'all were dumb for believing just that part of it. And here we are in a world that frankly is described better by the Christian and, and again, I am not I have, I have read 
uh, the Torah and I have read the Quran. I had to read them both academically. Um, but I have no uh, direct interpretation of those to draw from whatsoever. But in reading the Bible in the same capacity, um, I was much more inclined, or I was disposed, just given my geographical location, to connect with it. <clears throat> and, I'll, and I believe, in fact, I would be hard-pressed to, to think any other situation was possible, that in reading it, I would have been dismissive of it from the get-go. I would have, there, it, there's no way I would have been looking to gain wisdom in an academic reading of the Bible. So, and, and, I, and I have no experience with Hindu. I have no, I've read none of the Hindu texts. Actually, I, I, I did take a class in Buddhism where some Hindu texts were read. Um, so, there was a little overlap there. But I always thought Hindu looked like they had their shit together, but they were the ones who conflicted most with the, with the true record of mankind. I mean, they had a king's list going back how long? Forever. Um, they had, uh, they spoke of, uh, they spoke of, they were the ones who first made me believe, well, maybe there's some legitimacy to the alien thing because they seem to have interacted with what could most likely be described as advanced beings. So yeah, whatever, right? You just, you think that's some interesting mythology to have those elements of Vimanas and whatever. Not to mention some of the, the truly uh, wonderful uh, ancient technology of India. India is as interesting as Egypt. South America is as interesting as Egypt. Why do we focus so much on Egypt? That Great Pyramid is pretty impressive. The, and, and I'm sure I'm, I just left another civilization of, of consequence out of that equation, but those three... Those three were connected. If you don't know that, I'm here to tell you that. In, in looking for evidence for God, there's none to be had. Trust me. I went out there. Unless you want to say, nature is evidence of God. That's your best argument. And where you look for evidence that God doesn't exist, it's everywhere. Why would God allow this? Why would that be in the reality that God permits? Who creates a world so that someone like Lily has to live? That doesn't seem like a place where God exists. And this is what I say. When I say I went out Side myself looking for meaning. I'm tingling like a motherfucker right now. I did not mean to use the MF word. I have tried to eradicate that from my vocabulary, actually, because I think it's such a, uh, it's a, it's a word that I use. That is, that is maybe the one word I, I started using with absolute regularity that I never thought about uh, the true root meaning of the word. The M in front of the F is redundancy that I was able to eradicate from my life for the most part. So, um, if you are evidence driven, if you cannot find in yourself a concept of faith in which you can put some, some of your points, life will drive you analytically insane. And this is the best evidence for a simulation. Because I think a simulation would have the projectable responsiveness to be able to never bring the truths that you think are in the universe because you see them, you've been told that's the way it is. This is everything that you have come to, to analyze as evidentiary truth. So 
you commit to the concept the universe is chaotic. There is no purpose to any of it. I could have been a baby in an earthquake in Haiti falling into a crevice of lava at the age of 17 days. How fair is that? I could have been a white American male from a middle class loving family who did nothing but stand on his porch and spit on those who walk by. What kind of a universe is that? What kind of God would create that? And yet, if you believe that your kind, understanding, and forgiving intentions were what you were brought here to throw into the universe, if analysis paralysis was your greatest regret, then stop looking for evidence of a world that exists and start acting like the person living in the world you want to exist. I'm, I just had a tingle, unbelievable. I might as well just hit a peak on ecstasy. I can't be this confident that that matters, not to stay committed to it. I, I disregarded all of the concepts inherent in us mattering to each other. If the universe doesn't matter, then you don't matter to me and I don't matter to you. That's how I thought it worked. I was wrong. <sighs> I was absolutely wrong. We matter the most. Humanity is the miracle. We can't overlook having ascended to the top. You have to appreciate the gifts you're here with. And every one of us is a unique embodiment of that gift. All of us, we matter the most.